Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about some plant density work uh, we've been doing uh, starting from last year, uh, particularly in the lower and medium rainfall areas. So uh, that's the plant density uh, topic, and uh, but the real thing is uh, how low can you go, and that's really what we're going to talk about. I'd just first off like to introduce our project and the team that are on it, uh, and then get on to talking about field establishment, which can vary a lot with canola. Show you a few of the grain yield responses. Uh, more of them are available in separate reports for each uh, zone, each trial if you're interested from us. Uh, talk about weeds and some other aspects and then uh, wrap things up. And during the talk I'll try and talk about uh, optimising dollars rather than uh, just uh, physiological growth responses. Tactical break of agronomy as Sean has just told us. Uh, it's a five year partnership with us and GRDC. We work on every other thing other than wheat and barley. It is looking at, uh, you've decided to grow a certain break crop, how best to grow it rather than should you grow a break crop. Uh, currently canola gets most of the attention, uh, understandably, uh, but we will have a focus also on oats and GRDC has specifically uh, targeted some money and some resources for that, particularly oat and hay and oats in low, lower rainfall areas. The team as it stands, uh, this is a little meeting we had a couple of weeks ago to talk about our results and some of the stuff we'll do. Uh, we had a few uh, uh, people that we work with along with us, so we had Alan Meldrum from Pulse Australia, uh, Hepping Zhang, Jens Berger and Chris from CSIRO. Uh, they work on a canola physiology project and we do work closely. So you've got myself there, the old man in the middle, uh, surrounded by all the girls. Jackie Bucat is our development officer, works half time. Uh, three days a week at uh, South Perth, putting it together all our extension material. She was hoping to have a variety guide for you today, but that uh, didn't quite work out. Uh, Stephanie's just joined up at Geraldton. Uh, Stephanie's a technician. Uh, it's about her third week in, uh, and we hope to employ her boss in the next few weeks, a research officer up there. Sally Spriggs, our newest uh, research officer, uh, joined us uh, at Meriden, so please make yourself known to Sally. A lot of people will know her from her days in Wheatbelt NRM, but uh, yeah, if you can talk to her about your requirements in that part of the world in the central ag region. Uh, you've got Raj Malik at uh, Katanning, who works on our project and Blakely's barley project, and he'll have a bit more of a focus on oats. Bob French, a lot of people will know, has been around for even longer than me, and Bob's based at Meriden with his technician Laurie, and he works half time in our project and half in the Wheat and the MEF. And Rajit's there from the pathology project in uh, Dathwa to uh, keep us on the straight and narrow regarding diseases. Uh, so, yeah, we've got a couple more uh, appointments to go Oates at uh, Northam and Geraldton, a research officer. So, uh, we should have all regions covered and uh, hopefully work on things that are useful for people. Last year we had uh, a, a series of trials. Uh, two series really, timing of nitrogen uh, and then today's talk on density. So we had them in lots of spots. Uh, the, so the density trials were at Salmon Gums, Grass Patch, Holt Rock, Pingrup, Catanian, Morine Rock, which droughted out so there's no results, uh, Meriden, Cunderdon, Wongan Hills, the Dalwollany site um, at uh, the Levy site, and then Mullawar and Eridu, or the Chapman Valley. So I uh, noticed that we had quite a few in the lower rainfall. That's really where we wanted to target. And then a few comparators, if you like, or filling in the gaps where we haven't had info in some of the medium rainfall zones. The aim was to compare really hybrids and the uh, more expensive seed types, uh, TT hybrids and the Roundup Ready OPs and the hybrids of those that do cost more per kilo uh, and to see whether they uh, respond differently to density than the most commonly grown OP TT. And the reason for doing that is that we're worried about the rate at which OPs are coming out. Uh, this year we had two, Benito and Wahoo from New Sea, um, but it, it looked like it was slowing down, hopefully, and that this points into the last thing. Hopefully the endpoint royalty that New Sea are doing, and canola breeders tried to do, can solve this, and so they get the money at the other end of the year, and, uh, and we can uh, still buy seed at reasonable uh, prices. So that's the reason for doing it, it's just basically that if we have get forced into round uh, ready because of weeds or if we get forced into hybrids in the TT because uh, none others are available, then how low can you go? 
Uh, we started off uh, with looking at the variety, so we've got Telfer in the real low rainfall site, Stingray, that's our OP in those medium, medium sites. 450 is the best of the hybrids that were around for TT. Viper is the earliest uh, Roundup Ready OP we could get hold of. 404 is a standard. Big range and densities, five to eight plants target. Uh, so really emphasising on that low end. So lots of treatments at the low end to try and get that uh, response curve happening. So those low treatments were hard to do with the cone seeder, so we actually mixed in plastic beads uh, so that we had a volume there so that the plots were relatively even. Uh, luckily none of those plastic seeds beads uh, germinated so they didn't bugger up anything up. Um, yeah, the big disclaimer I guess is that obviously it's one year uh, of trials, lots of trials in lots of places, but lots of places got to get out of jail card with the season. Uh, but having just come from it last week, I was in Melbourne talking to other people who work on canola in various areas. Our results fit in with other low rainfall results as well. So uh, even though it's a bit of a disclaimer, I think they're fairly valid results. Let's talk about field establishment because it really does vary a lot in canola. Very small seed, as you know, very susceptible to seeding depth and other factors. So that's the range, the average range in our trials that we got. So a big range, this is the average for all the varieties over all the different densities. Uh, but for the, exactly the same seed lot, uh, we've got a big range in uh, establishment. So some very good establishment, like Wongan Hill, Salmon Gums and Grass Patch, and even Mullawal. Uh, and some very poor ones, like the Levy site, um, very low due to dry conditions. So a big range just depending on uh, how life panned out for you. In general, also the southern sites, Pingra, uh, Katanning, Holt Rock, tended to be on the low end, and we think that's mostly because they were the later sown trials, the middle to end of May, when things were cooling down and you just didn't get the, the vigour in, in the, the seedlings and the, and the emergence. So anyway, just to, you know, you probably know this already, but just exactly, nothing different about that seed lot, just a huge range. Density has a, an effect as well, but not as big an effect. So you can see the range is only from 56 to 42, but certainly, as you go on the low end, you'll get a better strike because they're not competing for resources amongst themselves. You do get a bit of a flattening out, but you still get some effect at the higher end. And of course, in tougher conditions, that effect at the high end can be uh, larger. Varieties do differ to some degree. In general, the hybrids are normally better. Uh, and what I've found over the years is a Viper and the Roundup Ready OPs, if any of the varieties are going to be slightly lower, tends to be those in terms of just their amount of vigour that they can uh, compete for, um, <coughs> for, for moisture. So it's a bit, bit, varieties do vary, but um, obviously uh, not as much as some of the other factors. So out of all of that, what's some, some, some guidelines? This is what we work on, normal, just enough moisture to get it in, which is most situations. About 50% field establishment for OPs and better for hybrids, because they are more vigorous. That's what I generally use for trials. Uh, as you can see, sometimes it can be better, sometimes it can be a lot worse in dry sown, tough conditions like you know, Dow Wallanew this year. So that's just a guideline. Obviously, nothing beats your experience. If you've got certain machines that are better than we use uh, knife points press wheels, if you've got a machine you think is better than that, maybe it's better than what we work on. But there's just a bit of a guideline for you. Luckily, if you get things wrong, canola is really forgiving. It's probably the most forgiving plant that I've worked on, and I've worked on, yep, all of them. Uh, so this is an example, five plants per square metre Salmon gums, this was sown in the middle of April, so it got away pretty well, compared to 20, and of course 404, the Roundup Ready hybrids are renowned for being very vigorous. You can see uh, a lot of air space there. By the middle of, well, the, towards the end of our season, at an early harvest this year, you can see that those plots are very even. So from a distance, uh, they look pretty similar. So canola is quite remarkable in its branching habit. You do get productive uh, branches at the base, which in a lot of other broadleaf crops that Basil branches aren't as productive, but in canola they are pretty good. Okay, when we talk about optimising, we, uh, I won't bore you with all of this, but the main thing for you guys <laughs> to realise is that we work on a dollar ten for every dollar we put in. Uh, so that's getting your money back plus the interest that you pay on it. 
So in other inputs like nitrogen, say, you might go for a two or three dollar return on the investment for every dollar, but we think one dollar around about there is about where you want to be. There could be an argument for using less than that because of the, you know, you are setting up the rest of the year. What that means is that for every um, kilo uh, gain uh, that you spend on, on seed this way versus a kilo that way, that's the range and sort of the slope that you need. So, you know, the very expensive Roundup Reddies, you need to get six kilos back for every kilo you put in. Um, right, and let's look at a few responses. And uh, a lot of trials were like this. So, observe plant density, so the actual plant counts. At the bottom here, I've put in the actual seed rates that we use in the trials, and you'll note that they're probably lower than you anticipate. We used actually a 75% expected field establishment for OPs and 85 for hybrids. The reason for that is that I didn't want the low density treatments to blow out into too many plants. So that's different to what I normally tell you to use. But anyway, you can see around about 20 plants per square metre at salmon gums with telfer flattening out. So if you were uh, uh, valuing your seed at $2 a kilo, you know, cleaning costs and some, perhaps some seed treatments, your economic optimum there would be 31 plants per square metre. So even though it's looking flat, there's a slight increase. So 31. If you were buying new seed, $11 a kilo, you'd drop it down to 22, you know, just because of the uh, extra expense. Of course, that's still a relatively low cost input and you may choose to do the 30 odd plants anyway. Get into 450, you can see a slightly longer uh, response uh, going on. But still, the economic optimum is, uh, again, plateauing around about the 20, but at 25 is where you peg out, so it's not worth chasing, even though there's a slight increase, it's cost you too much to go up. So again, for that particular trial, that's still only around about one, one and a half kilos per hectare. Uh, Viper, I guess a few things to notice is that there's not as many plants at the high end, so as I mentioned, less uh, strike with Viper and a bit of a drop in the uh, yield response as well. And uh, again, because of the cost of the seed, it wasn't worth chasing up there, so around about 22. Uh, 404, as we know, it's a very vigorous plant type, as a lot of the uh, Roundup Ready hybrids are. A very flat response, and in general, uh, the, uh, the 404 gave us the flattest response. So even the very low density treatments uh, are not far off uh, getting up there. You combine that sort of flat response with the higher cost seed, $31 a kilo or $3 per plant, uh, you're, that's the lowest uh, op optimum density of 18. Just putting all those curves on the same graph so you can compare. You may not have picked it up, but 450 actually out yielded 404, and that's uh, an odd result. Uh, generally, 404, the Roundup Ready hybrids outgun the TTs. And that was the case in most of our experiments. The Esperance area was uh, the outlier. Um, and the other thing you can see is the Viper uh, not having as many plants and the Telfer being outclassed by just about everything. In general, we found 450 outclassed Telfer in most experiments. Uh, and certainly 404 usually did Viper. And as I mentioned, usually 404 had higher gross margins and, and so on than most other varieties. Uh, just another site, Holt Rock, uh, a high yielding site, so even though it was so middle of May, we really struck the uh, prime time to be flowering and setting pods in spring, and uh, good yields. And again, around about 20 plants per square metre, you can see things starting to plateau out, although there's a slight more of a trend upwards. And then 404, we just had a bit of a spike at the high end. Uh, but again, it's uh, around about uh, 35 plants is where that one pegged out. So that one's slightly different response to some of the other sites, uh, probably because of the chase in the high yield. Cunderdon was one of those sites that had a very poor strike. So I'll put that one up there just to uh, indicate that, but also to show you that again, you know, around about the 25, 30 is where the things peg out. And in this particular instance, we had Stingray out doing the others. So there is some variation uh, between the sites. A real, very different response was Mullawa. Uh, as you saw in the uh, earlier slides, it had a very good strike, but then really moisture ran out. And this was, uh, we went up there the week before it rained. Uh, so things were really stressed. So you can see 
the higher density plants, you can't really tell in these photos, but the bottom leaves were dropping off and there was the occasional plant that looked like it was going to cark it. Um, then we had the good uh, saviour rains, but then we had aphids move in and we sprayed and then the green peach hung around. And I don't know if it shows up too well in the photo, but the low density treatment there is a lot greener, got a lot more pods than the higher density treatment, where the aphids actually went for those stressed plants and exacerbated them. But maybe you see a slight darkening there at the front of those uh, plots where the aphids are hammering it, such that uh, we've got a response like this. So around about 20 again, uh, things are pegging out and then reduced yield with higher densities. And uh, obviously a very low yield. It just shows you, I guess, in very dry, sort of short season regions, too many plants can be uh, not a good thing. Tree trunks. This is an interesting observation that uh, uh, can happen, as you saw in the photo, very low density, you get big, fat plants. And what we found in general, out of quite a few sites, is that the very low, <coughs> excuse me, the very low density treatments, uh, this is dry matter at the end of the year, actually have more dry matter for and on an area basis, as well as per plant, uh, than some of the higher, higher density treatments. So probably not a, a result you expect, but we observe that also at very low densities with other crops like lupins. Um, and so what does that mean? Is that you get a very uh, big plant that's a little bit unproductive um, and uh, very leafy. And we actually found uh, Kira Beard and Rajat had a look at these trials <coughs> and uh, despite what you might think, you actually end up with more sclerotinia at the high, at the very low density. Um, so that's an uh, in interesting result. And if you look, this is the grain yield superimposed, and again, uh, you know, you get the lower yield of those uh, very high biomass re responses, and then it flattening out again at just over 20 to 30 plants per square metre. Weeds can also, you've seen a few of these in the past. But uh, this is the Levy site where we had a little bit of ryegrass. Uh, but you can see in the Roundup Ready, density doesn't really have much of an effect. It's fairly flat on the ryegrass heads per square metre. Whereas this is the 450, the hybrid. Uh, even though you've got a com relatively competitive plant, at the low end it's just not vigorous enough and competitive enough. And you get a little bit more of a blowout of weeds. So that's obviously what you expect. But another reason to stay away from 5 and 10 plants per square metre. So in general, what are our uh, recos based on what we saw? So the OPTTs, your telfers and stingrays and those sort of thing. 31 plants is about where you want to be, uh, depending on the variety. So uh, stingrays are smaller seeded type. So I think it was about 320,000 seeds in our samples of uh, seed that we used. Uh, so that's that for stingray and a slightly larger telfer that we had at least, uh, 2.4. But there's a comment there about no reason not to go higher if you're using retained seed uh, to compete with weeds and, uh, and as, you know, as you saw there's not many instances apart from really low rainfall sites like Mullawa where there's no reason we can't go higher. And also bear in mind that farmer retained seed can sometimes uh, be smaller so those, those rates again you may end up with um, higher plant numbers anyway. Hybrid TT, 23 plants, which uh, with the seed size of that is 1.4, which is pretty low, probably lower than most people would want to use. You probably want to shandy it, perhaps with some fertiliser, as some people do, with some other type of seed, or just go bugger it and sow it at two kilos anyway. Uh, but uh, you certainly uh, no reason to go higher than that based on our results to date. OP Roundup Ready, if you're going the Roundup Ready route, I'd probably in the first instance uh, try and keep talking into growing hybrid Roundup Readies. Uh, but if you were just sticking with that, then the 24 hybrid Roundup Readies you've seen, fairly consistent story apart from a few ones where it kept responding at uh, higher yield levels of about 20 plants per square metre. And for um, 404, that's 2.1, but for other varieties it may even be lower. 404 tends to be a large seeded type, whereas other varieties uh, aren't. Uh, so big, and also 404 can change from year to year its size with the uh, bulk ups for the hybrid seed. So make sure if you're using that that you adjust to what seed rate uh, you're, at, uh, you're using for the seed size that you actually got. Uh, just wrapping things up, the key things I guess is to be aware that field establishment varies a lot. Uh, don't, it's not always the seed uh, 
that you've got it's uh, where, where it's sown, when it's sown, and particularly in the south, how late you sow can, seems to be have an effect. Luckily, if you get things wrong, they can handle low densities. You saw there the fives and tens and fifteens are up there with the pack, but still not quite as good as having twenty. But it gives you margin for error if you get your field establishment estimate wrong and you were targeting 20, you end up with 15, it's not the end of the world. Um, and as you might expect, the economic optimum, as we calculated, is uh, lower for purchase seed um, than it is if you retain the seed. So that's about it from me. Thanks. Um, seed size of the, of the given variety um, sometimes has an effect. Um, I did actually did some trials last year where we had very small farmer retained seed, I graded it out. And uh, yes, if you kept the same seed rate uh, of the very small seed, you did lose a bit of yield. Um, uh, the easiest way was just to bump up the seed rate of the small seed. A farmer retained seed in the low rainfall is small. And there are various ways you can go about it. One of the ways is to grade it. But to grade it to a size where it was bigger, uh, it was 96% uh, loss when you put it through the grader. So that's one way of doing it, which some farms go, that's fine, because I'm just, you know, deliver the rest. Um, but the other way is just to increase your seeding rate. Or the, actually the most cost effective way is to just buy new seed. Well, certainly expecting that the Roundup Ready hybrids, very vigorous plants, and uh, they, you know, all the trials I've done in the higher rainfall areas, you don't need the plant numbers that you need in the other types. And so that's good because it costs you a lot to get there. Um, so it all works out. Um, the must admit the hybrid TTs, to me, high level 450 is the proper, first proper hybrid TT in the, you know, that end of things that I've seen, that in 559, and maybe there's others coming through. But before then, they didn't always behave like a hybrid. Um, so, you know, my experience is tainted by my experience with those early ones. Yeah, well, around, as you saw at the last couple of slides, around about the two to two and a half kilos has you covered for most scenarios. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, with 450, because of its relatively of seed cost of $24 a kilo, uh, the 1.4 kilos per hectare was where we sort of said you might want to be, but it might just be a bit too scary uh, going at that rate without a properly calibrated machine. I know some machines just can't go that low, so you'd have to do a shandy, or the simplest way might be just, just go to two kilos, what your machine can handle.